Welcome, welcome to AARP Arizona uh, Hispanic Connection presents Let's Talk Salud, Dinero y Amor. Let's Talk Salud, Dinero y Amor. This is another very important topic that we are addressing today, and it is none other than the famous Obamacare. We are uh, calling it uh, by its name, Affordable Care Act, ACA, Obamacare. Many people call it different names, but I believe people have come to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, you know, feel more comfortable calling it Obamacare. And the topic today is open enrollment period and more, open enrollment period and more. Uh, but uh, we will be highlighting some of the key elements, the key benefits of this uh, law that has been uh, not free of controversy for a long, long time, even up to today. So I have two special guests today, and let me uh, introduce them. We have Claudia Maldonado. Claudia Maldonado is with Kia Health Connections. And Claudia, I'm going to show right at this moment the, your uh, contact information. Just tell us a little bit about uh, Kia, if you don't mind. Sure. So um, Keogh Health Connection is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to helping uh, the community, uh, families and individuals get connected to healthcare and community resources. So that basically means that we um, train very, very hard. We train our staff to understand how the healthcare system works within the state of Arizona. And then we also wanna make sure that we are knowledgeable in community resources because we understand that families and individuals may not just need healthcare, they may have other needs. And so we wanna make sure that we, we connect them to those services that they may need. And you know, Claudia, since uh, when the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, when the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act became law, uh, the, in Arizona, there was this. Co there is this coalition that was formed called Cover AZ, Cover Arizona. I have to believe that Keog is a member of that coalition. Uh, yes, we definitely are, and we have been a part of it since its inception. <laughs> And it's just a really wonderful network of, of partners who are committed to, to Arizona. And there is a saying that all camin all roads lead to Rome, right? Todos los caminos llevan a Roma. So I suppose that if anybody tad, uh, taps into the Cover Arizona, they will tap into all this uh, number of organizations that are part of this coalition. When it comes to getting help, information, enrollment uh, with uh, the Affordable Care Act and even more, correct? That is correct. Perfect. We also have uh, our good friend, Alan, and I have to see his, his last name before I can pronounce it. So it's Alan Jerzvig, Jerzvig, and he is the Director of Outreach and Enrollment with the Arizona Alliance for Community Health Centers. Alan, you have been um, involved from uh, point uh, from the very beginning with this law. I'm sure there's a lot of feeling in you about this law. How are you? Thank you so much for joining our show. Uh, it's good to be here. And again, the Arizona Alliance for Community Health Centers, our goal is primary health care for everyone. And everyone means everyone. We are a nonprofit organization and we work with more than 20 community health centers across the state that have more than 180 clinical locations. And at a community health center, you can see a dentist, you can get behavioral health, you can receive primary care, and all of our affiliate affiliates help people enroll, just like Claudia, and connect people to local resources, whatever county or city they're in across the state. It was um, somehow in, in my brain, when I think of the community health centers, uh, it, I, I see as the place where people who do not have insurance typically go to. Is this correct? Has this evolved? Has this changed? Well, it has changed. Um, community health centers care for anybody. Those that have no insurance, those that have Medicaid or access, those that have Medicare, or those that have private health insurance. It is true about half of the patients that are seen do have access. Right. And um, it's important to note, though, that 
all are welcome, even those that do not have insurance, because we have a sliding fee scale. Perfect. Claudia, uh, help us understand, and uh, we'll repeat this twice at the beginning of the, of the show and at the end. When we think of open enrollment period, I mean, people uh, would like to believe that you don't have to buy insurance. And then when you get sick, then you go and the insurance is going to be there for you. But typically uh, there are rules and you cannot enroll anytime you want. Uh, help us understand with the uh, marketplace, you know, healthcare.gov, mm -hmm. cuidado de salud.gov. What is this open enrollment thing? Uh, the open enrollment period is a time for Arizonans to go on to healthcare.gov or um, cuidadodesalud.gov to go and shop around and see if they would like to purchase a plan through the marketplace. And it's, you know, it's only six weeks long. So November 1 to December 15th is your prime time to go into you know the website and search and see if there is a healthcare option that you know it works for you um, that is affordable and that meets your needs. Perfect. So this is a perfect time for people to review their coverage, or even for people who do not have coverage to buy coverage. Correct. That it, it is. It's a perfect, perfect time, and we really want to make sure that everyone takes. Um, you know, this opportunity. And, you know, I, I, I'm running a banner, a ticker uh, on the show. Uh, and because it so happens that we are also on open enrollment for Medicare. So Medicare open enrollment goes from October 15 to December 7. And then the so-called, and I put it in quotes, because that's not the actual name, Obamacare from November 1st to December 15. Let me come back to Alan. Alan, um, this uh, Affordable Care Act has not been free of controversy. There's even several court cases. Can you, uh, and I know I, I was meant to ask you uh, this at the end, but let me ask you right now, what is the status? Is the Affordable Care Act alive and, and well? Is it, is it going to go away uh, court-wise? What can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, it's the law of the land. It's alive. It's well. And let me provide some reassurance that if you were to purchase a health plan through the marketplace, or we call it also healthcare.gov, during open enrollment, that coverage is for 2021. You have a contract with a private insurance company. There are six different companies selling in Arizona and in Maricopa County. So if the Supreme Court, and they are going to hear a case in November, but they will not decide that case till late May or sometime in June, even if they were to strike the law down, you have a contract with a private insurance company and that insurance company gets to make the decision of how they're going to work through that, that issue if that were to happen. So get covered. Now is the time to do it. Don't worry about rumor or lawsuits. That's all in the future. Perfect. So now let's uh, review because see AARP, and let me say this, got hit hard with by the public when we endorse the Affordable Care Act. And we always knew that the Affordable Care Act was not a perfect law, but it was a good, good beginning in working towards uh, creating a more uh, uh, affordable healthcare system for people primarily who do not have insurance. So we don't shy away, we endorsed it. And, and we did because we felt that it, it, it has some key elements. So why don't we review uh, some of those key elements uh, among the three of us, because I was you know, pretty much involved in the process doing from the very beginning. So I'm going to show some slides, if you don't mind. And I'm going to ask you to just chime in and say, all right, for instance, uh, what can we say about the premium situation? Because this law had a lot of protections or brought in a lot of protections that were not necessarily there before. 
I am showing, for instance, three points, three bullet points on consumer protections as it regards uh, to premiums. Uh, can we just take a stab at it and may maybe make some comments about how important these points are? Um, David, I'll jump in right there. And um, I can tell you that pricing in Arizona has stabilized. We have seen decreases in more of the counties because prices are based on what happens in a county. More counties had decreases and only a few counties had small increases. So our prices are stable. And before the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies had no limit of how much they kept for themselves or spent on marketing, spent on things that were not medical expenses. So the protection, as you see, the 80 to 85% is very important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is um, the whole AACHC, excuse me, the whole ACA, the whole Obamacare was meant to provide lower income people some opportunities they didn't have and to protect them from excessive premiums. So what's happened is we've seen a stabilization. All three of those points are valid and all three of those points would go away if the Supreme Court were to strike the law down without a replacement. And you know, this is one impression I had from, uh, I mean, this is uh, the law passed in 2010, it's 10 years ago. And the, one of the impressions that I personally had in reaching out in the community and doing community presentations is that most people, and I, and, and I really believe this most, uh, maybe 90% of the people had no clue what the Affordable Care, Care Act had, you know, the, those protections, those key uh, elements. And that's why they, they got involved with the political rhetoric and, and, and they were swept into opposing most of it. But I have to believe that the one, when one gets into these key elements, it's very impressive. Let me move on to the next slide and, and ask uh, uh, Claudia if you can chime in on the, this uh, point, uh, if you don't mind. So um, I think one of the biggest key points of the Affordable Care Act is that pre-existing conditions can't be used to deny coverage or charge more. Um, so pre-ACA, what we would typically see out in the community as we interacted with our uh, community members is they, they've said, you know, I have asthma and they won't cover my asthma um, related issues or I've even seen, I had even seen people who had, were not allowed to have coverage on certain parts of their bodies because mm. there was some sort of pre-existing issue. Right. And it, it just kind of, you know, boggled our minds that, you know, we need to be able to take, take care of our community from head to toe and everything in between. Right. And so it's really important that when the ACA um, was adopted, that that was no longer going to to be an issue. Um, same with um, not having limits placed on coverage, lifetime and annual. People, you know, we, we didn't want to see people going bankrupt, you know, because of healthcare expenses. And we would see that. We would, we saw people claim bankruptcy because their medical expenses were just so high. Um, and also coverage, not having it dropped if you get sick for making an honest mistake. You know, we're human, right? We're human right. and sometimes we make mistakes. But all of these three points are really important and they're important highlights, right? That we have, you know, consistently over the years have educated our community members on. To my knowledge, the, uh, the number one reason why people go bankrupt is because of medical bills. So this, uh, uh, this um, uh, protection that people cannot uh, be dropped of their coverage once they exceed a certain amount, it, it's it's huge, you know. So again, let, let's continue because we have a few to, to go over. Uh, how about free preventive services, uh, uh, Alan, and young adults? Uh, I mean, these are two huge ones too. Well, the most popular part across the country in Arizona of the Affordable Care Act is probably that young adults can stay on their parents' plan mm -hmm. until age 26, and that free preventive services are included. So if you're mm -hmm. covered with a qualified health plan from the marketplace at any level, and we don't need to get into the levels, but any level other than catastrophic, you get free preventive services. And I love that 
because I grew up with my mom telling me an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm. And we in this country, we love to spend our medical dollars on the cure, and we spend very little on prevention. So right. this was a very important point, and it really benefited women and children that were perhaps not getting the well care that they needed. Perfect. Uh, well said. Let me uh, go into another uh uh, and well, just uh, you mentioned the four levels, and we can say that when purchasing insurance, people are going to have to choose between these four levels. Obviously, the, the level of coverage, you know, 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, and 90, 10, I have to believe this is, is still intact, correct? Yeah, it's still intact, and the silver plan is by far the most popular. I don't have exact numbers but more people will choose that than any other plan. However, there are thousands of people in Arizona that could get a free bronze plan where they would not have to pay a monthly premium. And, I, and when you say free, this has to, I have to believe that this has to do with the income, right? Because in uh, the, the uh, access is, a, is free healthcare based on income. The right. Affordable Care Act it's not free, but it's subsidized based on income as well, correct? Yes, I like to call it financial assistance. Right. And the biggest reason that people do not enroll in coverage in this country is they believe it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And that is not true for everybody. So if you earn a modest income and you don't have insurance, you have multiple options and I know that Claudia can address access and the um, financial um, aid that's available. The point is, you don't know what you're going to pay until you take a look, until you try. And Claudia, since uh, uh, we are uh, uh, you know, talking about Keog, right? Mm -hmm. um, you go beyond the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you, do you also help folks to apply for, say, access, I assume? Yes, we um, we're very fortunate in that we can help navigate multiple programs for for our community because it's not uncommon to have a family that qualifies for various programs. You might think, oh, it's a family of four. You know, th they're all going to be marketplace. That may not be the case. You may have individuals that are marketplace. You could have some that are access and you can have some that are kids care. Mm. And so working with a partner like Keo, um, we help navigate all those programs at once. And it's a lot of work, but we are there because we understand how confusing and overwhelming it can feel. We don't right. expect the community to understand all of those little tiny rules and guidelines and 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 things that are just not not known to the average person. But when you work with someone like Keo, we take you through the whole process. Perfect. Another a very uh, key, I would say, benefit, Alan, and, and that there was some controversy in the sense of why am I buying a plan for benefits that I don't need? I'm a male. Why do I need that kind of care? But what is the significance of the Affordable Care Act uh, coming up with a set of 10 essential health benefits? Very simply, David, people who receive their insurance through their employer were pretty much covered for all these 10 things. Mm. But if you were a small business or if you were trying to buy your own coverage, you may be able to find coverage, but it may have provided very limited benefits. Mm. So the idea was to let's bring everybody along that has to shop on their own or at a small um, employer so they get comprehensive coverage, mm. coverage that is solid and good, like people from big employers. And sometimes I think people lose perspective and don't understand that the Affordable Care Act has provided a much higher quality coverage than was previously available to people that were buying their own coverage. Yes. You know, I have to uh, uh, say that this is one of my favorites. I know, I, I mean, it's hard to pick favorites uh, because there's so many benefits, but 
out of pocket limits. When we hear the word limit, sometimes we don't, it sounds almost like it has almost like a negative connotation, but limit here is very positive. Claudia, what can you say about the out of pocket limits? Well, it's important to note that out of pocket limits are what help us, you know, make sure that we're not spending too much on our health care, right? And so it's really there as a protection. And so when we sit down with uh, a community member, we really try to explain what all these terms mean, right? Mm -hmm. We may think, oh, maybe like you said, it's not a good thing. It is a good thing. And so when we sit down with clients, we're explaining, you know, this is a benefit out of pocket limits. Um, and that also that you can have um, small business health operations program, which is shop, um, which is um, we, we can, you know, help provide information on. But it's important to sit down and explain what this means to the, the community and the individual. You know, I, I know I did not ask you to prepare a specific information for shop, for small business health options. Can you just elaborate just a little bit more? I know shop is a section within the marketplace for small businesses. How is that doing? Any information on that? Are we? Are they doing fine? Are small businesses buying insurance? Any input on that? I, I can try to answer that question. That in the last couple of years, the marketplace has changed some where people like myself and Claudia are no longer directly involved in shock. We were at the beginning. So now um, the federal government is encouraging small businesses to still use shop, but go to a broker, go to an insurance agent. And as far as it, in terms of size, we don't really have good information on it. Okay. But the current administration has provided more options for coverage for small employers. Some of them are not equal to the coverage that you get from Obamacare or the ACA, but there are options for small businesses. But if you own your own business, you're still a family. And if you're getting right. coverage just for the two or three people that are family members, you can shop in the marketplace. I did want to um, make a further point of what um, Claudia was saying. Let me give you an example of a family of four living in Maricopa County. And if that family of four earned no more than $50,000, they could get a plan for $253 because of tax credits that mm. help lower their monthly premium. The regular price is actually um, 500, no, 700, almost $800, but they'd only be paying 250. But because they earn less than 250% of the federal poverty level, we don't have to get into that detail, but because of their limited income, instead of having a deductible that might be two or three thousand dollars, their deductible would only be five hundred dollars. Mm. Instead of having an out-of-pocket max of like eighty-five hundred, their out-of-pocket max would be fifty-four hundred. So what's so important is it is a bit complex, but there are two different forms of financial assistance. One helps you pay your monthly bill and one helps you pay less when you see the doctors. Perfect. Good example. Let, let's go. Uh, let's continue to review. Uh, we are pretty good at two, uh, a 23 minute mark. Not too bad. This is this is a, a huge one. I mean, this is one of the uh, see, that's why you can't say your favorite, but this is called Medicaid expansion. And again, it brought a lot of controversy, but it's, it turned out, especially for Arizona, even with Jan Brewer, who was Republican and typically Republicans show a little bit uh, less support, shall we say, for this act. But even she uh, accepted the expansion. And, and so so. How does that help, Claudia? I mean, to me, this, again, is one of the key points of the Affordable Care Act, the expansion of Medicaid. Go ahead. So the expansion of Medicaid was huge for Arizona. It meant that we had uh, childless adults who were now, sometimes they would just be just above that income threshold 
and it helped expand that income threshold so that more people could, you know, fall into the Medicaid categories. And this was huge because sometimes you would have people that were on fixed income and even though they were typically low income, they still wouldn't qualify for access. Mm -hmm. And so this really made a huge difference. I mean, we've had people who were had just been diagnosed with cancer and when this had just been expanded and because of this improvement, they said, I'm alive because of this. Wow. And so that is is very powerful in and of itself. So basically, if we if we get to the nitty gritty, we're looking at 38 percent more that people could make and still be eligible for access. Uh, so whereas people needed to make 100 percent of federal poverty level, the expansion basically meant basically two things that now you can make 38 percent more and still get it and you you could be childless and still qualify for access let's just cover one more and then we'll review the open enrollment information and then we'll we'll end if you don't mind and i'll give it to alan alan how about the donut hole in on medicare it's very interesting how laws work i mean what does one affordable care act have to do with medicare but it did have something to do can you relate to us uh, what the, the affordable care act did for to close the donut the so-called donut hole go ahead well actually david you probably know more about it than i do now i'm on medicare and I, you have a medicare advantage plan and what happened when Part D, the drug coverage in part for Medicare came about, there was this gap. If you spent X amount on your medications, it, they were covered. But then if you continued spending, you ended up with no coverage, essentially, and you had to right. pay market price until your spending hit another threshold. It's confusing. It is very, um, very upsetting because my wife hit the donut hole once when we were on, on Medicare. Mm. It's like, what do we do? Right. <laughs> so why don't you address, David, exactly what the ACA or Obamacare did to help fix that? You explain it well. Basically, like you said, Part D plans that cover prescription drugs were set up uh, for to have coverage in three stages. On the first stage, people pay a, a max of 25%. On the second stage, called the, the gap, the donut hole, the insurance covered nothing. And then on the third stage would be called catastrophic coverage. They would pay, the people would pay 5%. Well, the Affordable Care Act, what it did is that during that mid middle gap, if you will, it started to give discounts because the insurance covered nothing during that state. And those discounts kept increasing, increasing, increasing until in 2020, it reached 75% discount. So mm -hmm. by now, both on part on the first stage and on the second stage, they end up paying pretty much the same, which is about 25% of the cost. Then when they reach the catastrophic, a stage they only pay five percent pretty much what you said alan and why don't we end the show because i think we have already uh reviewed this amazing uh benefits that this law had i mean i i don't know i don't know to me sometimes when when i see people opposing something most of the times it is because they lack the understanding of things and we get, get carried away on the rhetoric so thank you so much for helping us review uh this key elements of the affordable care act and as alan said it's still the law of the land if we are going to hear anything about it in terms of whether it's going to be struck down or not it's going to be next year for this year, we still have to uh, take care of the enrollment uh, and then purchasing insurance. Why don't we, uh, again, uh, Claudia, if you can help us review the uh, matters of open enrollment and uh, kind of help us what people can do during this period, uh, please. So what we want to make sure people are doing is from November 1st to December 15th, they are reviewing their healthcare options through the marketplace. 
And what we also want to make sure that people know across the state is there is a there are a lot of people, not just Kio, but many other groups that are dedicated to helping people navigate their healthcare options. Um, even if you're curious, um, you know, have somebody walk you through this process. A lot we're we're free. We have free services and a lot of knowledge that we want to. Um, you know, in part on the community about what their healthcare options are. So make sure that from November 1st to the December to December 15th, you're checking out your uh, healthcare options for the marketplace. Now, keep in mind that Medicaid and um, Kids Care, or at, what we call Access here in Arizona, that is open enrollment year round. Okay, that does not have certain dates. That's all the time. So just make sure that you uh, call, you can call Keo, or you can even call um, the statewide number where you can get connected to other people in your area, which is 1-800-377-3536. Or you can actually go on to coveraz.org and you can find an organization in your area that is available and um, you can set up an online appointment. And Alan, uh, again, I have to say that whoever came up with the idea of uh, coming up with this um, coalition of, of statewide organizations that help provide assistance in, in, in buying these plans and navigating the systems, whoever came up, it, it was just an amazing. Just tell us in, in maybe no more than a minute the background of, of the formation of this uh, uh, Cover Arizona. As soon as the, the Affordable Care Act was passed, there was a period of time where people could get pre-existing coverage through a special plan. So across the state, those organizations that were helping people with access and kids care came together and say, what do we do to tell people about this special thing? Mm -hmm. We also came together when it was about trying to expand Medicaid in Arizona. So it was kind of a organic or natural development that once we got to the first open enrollment period, we just started working together. And from the beginning, we felt, wouldn't it be nice if we had one phone number for across the state, the mm -hmm. one place to go? So when we have wonderful opportunities like you've provided, we can speak to the whole state by using the 800 number or if we're only talking to one community, we can use the, a local number. So the last word is very simple. Now is the time to look. So if you've lost coverage, if you've lost income, and I wanna say there was one last thing, and that is there is no wrong door. If you apply for access and you earn too much, they will forward your application to the marketplace. If you apply for the marketplace and you earn too little, for the marketplace, they will send that application to access. So do something, I think is the simplest message. Now is the time to check out your options. Perfect. Well, remember, coveraz.org or cover Arizona on Facebook. That is the door that will get you to Keog and will get you to so many other organizations uh, throughout the state of Arizona uh, to uh, basically get help. Uh, Claudia Maldonado, thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you, David. And Alan, same to you. Thank you. Uh, you're always, always ready and willing to help us do this show. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining today's show. We hope it was helpful. Uh, have a great uh, day and see you on our next uh, show. Bye-bye. Arizona Hispanic Connection.